We welcome our viewers around the world. In this video, we review the World Bank data on the cumulative number of infants who die before they reach the age of one year. Between 2014 and 2023, Nigeria lost approximately 4.8 million infants, over 16 times Ghana's total, and more than 22 times that of the United States. Please, subscribe, like and share. Visit these trusted resources for additional information. The learning objectives are on your screen. In this video, we examine the scale of infant deaths in Nigeria, compare outcomes with Ghana and the United States, we also include data on India, and explain why absolute numbers matter, and show what infant mortality reveals about governance. This graph, showing the number of infants dying in Nigeria is critically important, and we will examine it in greater detail later in the video. Our viewers are encouraged to view our two-part video on black lives and infant mortality rate, where we examine infant mortality rate in more detail. Infant mortality is one of the most basic indicators of whether a society is functioning. It reflects access to health care, maternal care, nutrition, sanitation, education, and governance. Today, we will look at absolute numbers, not rates, because absolute numbers tell us the human cost. Let us turn our attention briefly to India. The graph shows that India records a higher number of infant deaths than Nigeria. Indeed, India ranks first globally in infant deaths, with Nigeria a close second, reflecting the combined effects of population size and health system performance. In 2023, India recorded about 567,000 infant deaths. Nigeria was second, with 443,000 infant deaths. Our focus now shifts to Nigeria, Ghana, and the United States. The table on your screen reports World Bank data on number of infant deaths in the decade spanning 2014 to 2023. The data are compared to understand scale, policy choices, and consequences. On your screen is a graph showing the number of infant deaths from 1960 to 2023, the most recent year with available data. For Nigeria, the data begin in 1965, while for Ghana and the United States, they span 1960 to 2023. The graph clearly shows that infant deaths in Nigeria are dramatically higher than in Ghana and the United States throughout the period. What is also clear from the graph is that the number of infant deaths in Nigeria have risen markedly since 1977. Nearly half a century later, over 46 years, the country has still not returned to, or sustained, the lowest level of infant deaths recorded in that year, when approximately 369,000 infants died. That prolonged failure to regain even the 1977 benchmark represents a profound human tragedy. It reflects not a temporary setback, but a sustained breakdown in the capacity of Nigeria's health system to protect its most vulnerable citizens. The rise in the number of infant deaths, beginning in the late 1970s through the late 80s, coincides with the period of severe economic challenges in Nigeria. Between 1975 to 1979, the military regime of retired General Bosenjo imposed economic stabilization policies that included controlling public sector wages and reducing reliance on external loans. Between 1977 and 1979, the civilian administration of Shihu Shagari introduced austerity measures as the country faced inflationary pressures and budget deficits. These measures included currency controls, reduced imports, and curtailing of public sector spending. It is evident from the graph that the period of harsh economic policies from the mid-1970s through the late 1980s coincided with a sharp increase in infant deaths in Nigeria. Let us examine this graph of infant deaths in Nigeria more closely. 
We begin with the Nadir in 1977, when Ifan deaths were about 369,000, and define a baseline from 1977 to 1981, with minimal variation. In 1982, deaths rose to 375,000, nearly 5,000 above baseline, more than seven standard deviations. Under control chart and QSIM, cumulative sum monitoring, which are standard statistical methods used by public health agencies to detect sustained departures from a stable baseline in time series data. Using these surveillance rules, this increase exceeds alert thresholds. By 1984, Infant deaths had risen to 388,128, representing an increase of approximately 18,000 deaths, or about 4.8% above the post Nadia baseline. Combined with repeated year on year increases, this exceeded standard control charts and QSOM surveillance thresholds, confirming a statistically significant structural change rather than random fluctuation, and clearly requiring intervention. In the decade between 2014 and 2023, Nigeria lost 4.8 million infants before their first birthday. Not in war. Not in a famine. But quietly, year after year. That number is not a metaphor. It is not a projection. This number is staggering to comprehend. The 4.8 million infant deaths in Nigeria occurring over a decade between 2014 and 2023, are more than the population of people in each of the 10 countries on your screen. Namely, Namibia, Qatar, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Puerto Rico, Uruguay, Mongolia, Eritrea, Georgia, Croatia, and Panama. There are an additional 95 countries with a population less than 3 million people. The number of infant deaths in Nigeria that were recorded in the decade between 2014 to 2023 is staggering and hard to comprehend. This is a human catastrophe. In Nigeria, over 515,000 infants died in 2014 alone. In the years that followed, nearly half a million infants died every year, consistently, for a full decade. That is an extraordinary and persistent loss of life. Any functioning surveillance or governance system should have recognized this pattern as an ongoing catastrophe and responded accordingly. Even with gradual improvement, the decline in infant deaths in Nigeria is painfully slow. The cumulative total over 10 years is 4.8 million infant deaths. This is an indication of a non-functioning healthcare system. It points instead to a system in prolonged disarray, unable to deliver basic protection for infants at scale. Now compare this with Ghana, a country with fewer resources, but stronger public health system. Ghana lost about 291,000 infants over the same 10-year period. That means... Nigeria lost more infants in one year than Ghana lost in an entire decade. Let's widen the lens further. The United States, with a much larger economy but fewer births, lost 214,953 infants over the same period. Nigeria lost over 22 times the number of infants lost in the United States, not because Nigerian lives are less valuable, but because systems matter. These are not abstract statistics. These are children who never learned to walk. Mothers who left hospitals without babies. Families whose lives were permanently altered. And the most uncomfortable truth is this. Most of these deaths were preventable. Infant mortality does not respond to slogans. It responds to Skilled birth attendance, functional primary health care, better nutrition, data-driven governance, accountability, countries that treat data seriously, save lives. In countries that govern by intuition and politics, 
the children don't stand a chance living. Let this information sink in. Between 2014 and 2023, Nigeria lost nearly 5 million infants. Until this number shocks us into reform. Data does not lie. Until it provokes accountability. Until it changes how governance is done. Leadership determines outcome. The tragedy will continue, quietly, every year. Let us examine the data from a different perspective. Nigeria loses about 1,300 infants every day, nearly 55 every hour. By comparison, in Spain, whose total population is approximately 49 million, about 439,000 people die each year from all causes, or roughly 1,200 deaths per day. In other words, Nigeria's infant deaths alone occur at a rate comparable to the total daily deaths in a country like Spain, across all ages and causes combined. In summary, infant mortality in Nigeria has reached an alarming scale and requires immediate, evidence-based national action. The learning objectives have been met. If you found this presentation informative and educational, please give this video a thumbs up and consider subscribing and sharing with family members, friends and colleagues. Your support helps us create more informative and educational content. Until next time, stay strong, stay hopeful. This has been a presentation of Opomularo Media LLC.